Welcome to Second Chance Gambling Addiction and Mental Health Recovery Channel. My name's Kieran, I'm 30 years old and I'm a recovering gambling addict. Over the years I've suffered from a range of mental health issues and I just thought now I'm in a better place, how can I help others? What can I do to give back? And I came up with the idea of creating a channel and telling my story, how I've gone through gambling addiction, mental health issues and to a degree alcohol addiction um, and come out thankfully in a better place and I'm going to get other people on who have been through addictions, gambling addiction in particular, mental health issues and just by telling their story hopefully we can help even just one person out there who may be going through similar or worse even you know whatever they're going through just hearing our stories it may help them i hope it does and um, that's the aim with the channel so on to my story um i'd just like to put out there from the off i don't blame anyone for my gambling addiction i don't blame anyone for any of the things that i did during the height of my addiction and especially towards the end I chose to gamble, I chose to do the things that I did and I take full responsibility and I'm very very sorry to the people I, I, I hurt I did cause a, a path of destruction and it will um, rightly so stay with me till, till, till the end um, so where do I start? Right, I'm 30 now. I started gambling around 8 years old. Um, I lived with grandparents uh, on my mother's side, but I also had a grandparent on my father's side who lived at the seaside, a coastal town. Um, and why I'm saying that is I will mention them further on. Um, so, yeah, 8 years old, I was brought up in a council house, council estate, weren't amazing amounts of money going around, but never wanted for anything, football was everything to me, um, just a normal kid really, but I had a, a liking to gambling, um, and it the signs was there from an early age, really, you know, when we visited the grandmother at the seaside it was all about going in the arcades you know she enjoyed a game of bingo she enjoyed a go on the fruit machines socially so she should you know but what I started to do is play bingo um, obviously the usual 2p machines and the, the teddy bear grabbers I was always into them but when I sort of developed a a liking for the fruit machines and the bingo really things stepped up from there I remember getting a stool um, searching for a stool just to climb on so I could reach the, the slot where you put money into the uh, fruit machine didn't have a clue what I was doing uh, I just know if you got three symbols you win God knows what had happened on the feature but over time I began to learn whereas Normal people would also play one bingo card. I had to have three seats worth of bingo cards lit up. And you'd see me dashing from side to side trying to mark the numbers as the bingo callers saying them. I couldn't just do with one. I wanted a better chance of winning. There was the signs very early on. At home... You know, my grandparents who I live with would have a gamble. They would have a gamble on the daily 49ers lottery. I would see betting slips lying around the house. Um, and occasionally horse racing, you know, they'd have a go on that. Um, in that environment, growing up around betting slips, going to the bookies every day, um, going to the bingo when I visited the grandmother at the seaside, um, it, it was 
it was sort of normalised gambling. It was normal in that environment. And they are not to blame. You know, they had every right to have a gamble. They didn't have a problem. They had every right to have a gamble. Um, but it was normalised. So, as I got a little bit older, when I was going into school, we, we had a game called Jinx, where you would chuck money against the wall. And whoever's landed closest, you collect all the money um, from 20p items or to lie about money that I needed at school for trips and things. And I was chucking £10 notes wrapped around a 50 pence piece with an elastic band around it and chucked it at the wall. You're talking £10 at 10 years old. It's a lot of money. Um, but yeah, I, I remember, well similar sort of stuff happening at the seaside again it features heavily in my younger years um i would go through spending money at the speed of lightning it's you know i, I remember going to visit family members at the seaside and i saw that as an inconvenience i just saw right they live there where can i gamble the arcades why do we have to be three hours at the relative's house. Why? Um, and that, as we approached the promenade after we'd left the relatives, I would be in the back of the car going, gamble time, gamble time, gamble time. And it's just these signs, as I think back, it was just clear that I was, it, writing was on the wall. I was going to have a gambling problem unless I did something drastic about it, which obviously at that age I didn't. Um, and it progressed, progressed. As I approached my uh, sort of leaving school years, 16, I met my wife, who was somehow still with me. Um, she, uh, I moved in with her family. Um, and I remember going to their caravan and my grandparents had scraped together £20 for me to take on away with me overnight. And I remember going in the arcade and when I came out, my father-in-law said, where's your money? I said, I've, I've just lost it in arcade. He said, why? And I said, well, that's what it's for. And it's just, it might seem something so little, but it's so big of a sign. To me, going in there, losing £20, age 16, in the arcades, on the fruit machines, was totally normal. And I didn't bat an eyelid. In fact, I was bewildered as to why he had asked me. Um, and I, I sort of didn't get any better from there for a period of time. As I began to work, I began to gamble more because more money was coming in. I remember having a 30-minute dinner break and I timed it. If I leave my machine, I get to the car, get to the bookies in 10 minutes. I would have 10 minutes gambling. I'm 10 minutes back onto the machine, all inside 30 minutes, and I would lose £80, £90. When a Friday would come, I would lose my week's wages quite often. We would get bailouts from my father-in-law um, and other family members, and I would just throw it back in their face because then I would go and do it again and again and again. Um, until when I was driving for a living, I was staying away in the lorry, and this is age 23. I was staying away in the lorry, and I was gambling from 6pm at night until 2am in the morning on the services, motorway services machines. Um, and I smashed a machine, and I mean smashed a machine. Um, completely broke the glass. When the attendant came and asked if I know anything about it, I said, no, I've not seen anyone do it. Didn't have a care in the world for that company who was up to replace that screen, you know, the cost incurred. And I just walked out. But what I did do is vow that I would not bet again. Um, because I thought, I'm going to end up in prison. I'm going to end up in big trouble, even more than financial. At this point, by the way, I didn't fully appreciate the negative impact on my mental health obviously when I was getting um, 
losses, it, I was down and things, but the the big toll it was taking already um, at such a young age. I stopped then for two and a half years. I went to Gamblers Anonymous. I was daunt. It was daunting to even think about going to Gamblers Anonymous. Um, but I got my date. When I went into Gamblers Anonymous for the first time, um, it was actually a little bit earlier that I went into Gamblers Anonymous for the first time, but I was nervous. I thought, I'm going to have to speak in front of everyone. They're all going to make a fuss. I don't want that. But it was nothing like that. They just asked me if I want to go in a room with one or two members. I answered a few questions, I had a look in a book, answered a few more questions in the book. And I was asked if I want to join in the second half of the meeting, which I did. And from that day, I got so much support, so much um, friendship, really, who I'm still friends with now, um, some of them. And I just, it was nothing like I expected. I was so at ease. Um, so yeah, I stopped for two and a half years then. Um, I didn't go to meetings because I was working away in the lorry and my local meetings midweek. But in um, the same year, I was arrested for something that I did not do, a serious um, offence that I didn't do. Um, the gentleman who did that is now in prison serving 13 years, I think. But I was wrongful. Uh, arrested, wrongly arrested, wrong place, wrong time, everything else. The impact that had on my mental health was horrendous. Um, but it wasn't until a little bit later I'd, I'd sort of have flashbacks and that would really deteriorate my mental health. In that time, I've lost my grandparents who I was brought up with. And I just didn't know, I didn't know if I was blocking it out, I didn't know if it was delayed grief. But in September of 2015, I went back gambling as an escape. I think, you know, what had happened is I'd had an anxiety attack. Um, and with the anxiety attack, it wasn't normal for me to have that. Although I had mental health issues, I'd never suffered a, a proper panic attack. Um, heart beating, oh, just so bad. Um, really fast, really fast, chest pain, tingling in my hands. I was convinced I was having an heart attack. And I wouldn't believe for months and months and months that there was nothing wrong with me. Heart, and I wouldn't believe, I was jumping to the worst case conclusion. I've got a big problem with my heart. Who knows what could happen? And I think I just escaped. I went back gambling, loans, payday loans. Anything I could do to get my hands on. At this point, it was all still in the bookmakers. Um, but as we got into 2016, I started to develop a liking for online gambling. That was the biggest mistake. Although I was gambling out of control and heavily before that, gambling online really, really made things a whole lot worse. Because it's just a figure. You're not holding the money, you're not. It's just a figure at the side of the screen and it doesn't seem real. Um, so yeah, my wife started, you know, she, she was in and out of hospital. She lost her mum. I was there, but I wasn't there also, you know. I was starting to go into a world where I, uh, gambling addiction was just consuming my every being just absolutely gripped around me i woke up and thought when's my next bet how can i get money today what can i lie about what can i do here i just wanted to get a bet on and um my wife needed me and i'm ever so sorry for that she was going into hospital for two three weeks at a time because she had a chronic illness which they didn't know at time. Um, and she'd scream and scream and scream with pain. The only pain relief that helped had to be given in hospital because it was morphine based. And she had mental health issues of her own, so they wouldn't send her home. So just hearing her scream and not being able to help her was just horrendous. I escaped again with gambling. 
I mean, I'm a gambling addict. I would have probably gambled if life was unkidory, but this was just an added reason, an added excuse. Um, so, yeah, there was one of us working, and I just needed money. I needed a big win that will sort everything out. No problem, you're not working. I can sort this. Don't happen. I did win big, and I lost it. Worst thing I could have done. I, okay, I paid a few debts, but I lost the majority. Um, but in some case, it showed me, oh, I can win, I, I can win. And, it, you know, from winning a certain amount, you, you might think in your head you've got a £2,000 figure to win or 1000 whatever it might be. But when you get there, you think, if I carry on, I could get that to four. I could get that to six. Maybe I could get that to 12. 20 would be ideal and before you know it you've lost you've lost every ba every last penny of the balance you had especially online when it's not as easy as just going to the counter and collecting your money um but yeah over the next two years i would gamble to a point where we lost a zone my wife had a mental health breakdown we was taken in by friends who let us stay on the sofa, I was still gambling. Um, and I just got to this point where we'd lost our own, we was evicted, we had nowhere to go. And I thought, what could I do to change this? And the gambling addict in me said, one big win again, we'll sort it out. So the wages I was bringing in, even though we had nothing, I used that to try and get the big win that would sort everything, sort a new place to live, sort the car, sort everything out. And um, it didn't happen. And I lost wages after wages. I had so many bailouts from my father-in-law. I remember one night he put £3,000 in the bank that I had blown the night before, so he replaced it. And I blew that money while my wife was asleep. So in the course of two days, I've blown six thousand pound, three thousand of our money, three thousand of the replaced money from my father-in-law, and I just, I hate myself for that. I did a lot worse as well. Over time, we, you know, my wife had a mental health breakdown. She was in a mental health um, ward at the hospital. I was staying in the car, in the car park outside, drinking. I would get the drink through telling um, supermarkets I've got a complaint. I'd get a voucher and use that to, to buy the booze. We had nothing. Um, I would phone banks and make a complaint to get compensation to gamble. I would um, use, I would travel around, fill the car up with petrol tell my wife that I need £50 to pay for it. Um, she would transfer that money. Then I would go into the kiosk and say that my car's not working on my PIN number, whatever. Fill a piece of paper out on the promise to come back in seven days. And I would gamble the £50. This is how the, the gambling consumed me. And I just, it got to the stage where... I was blowing every last penny that we had. We was eventually housed, um, but the housing that we was given was uh, supported living. It was a roof over his head, we're grateful, and we are still here, actually. They charged the council an arm and a leg for us to live here. Um, this company, sorry. And um, it means it, I can't work. If I work, we have to pay a thousand pound a month rent, um, which is horrendous. So once again, I can get us out over here. I can get us out into the a new place where it's not as bad uh, rent wise. One big win will sort it. Never happened, um, and in September twenty eighteen. began to seriously consider suicide and 
I've had suicidal thoughts for years. I'd also self-harmed for years. I've got scars. You probably can't see them all over my body, upper body from from arm and cutting and things. I'd whack myself around the head in public and everything. And um, But suicide became a real option because I was tired of causing so much pain and upset to people around me. Um, and you hear that quite a lot with suicidal, you know, people, people with suicidal thoughts. And I just wanted to stop them going through it because gambling had consumed everything around me, about me. I destroyed so much in my path. So one day, after losing a week's wage overnight, cutting my arms, bleeding everywhere, I decided to go to my happy place, which was my local football team's training ground. I didn't research suicide. I just took tablets that I had on, on me at work, which were paracetamol for in case I get a headache while I'm driving or whatever. And I just took what was in the box and I just wanted to stop people going through everything that I was putting them through. The very second it went, the tablets went down my throat, I regretted it instantly. And I went and asked, actually the current manager of my local football team was just coming out and I asked, I explained what had happened and I was drowsy and yeah, they sat me down and got me help and found an ambulance and the ambulance driver, when I eventually was coming around a little bit, he said, I said, look, I regretted it straight away and he said, that's very much a common thing that people with suicidal thoughts say, as soon as they've done the act, when they have gone through with it, whether it's overdose or jumping or whatever, if they survive, they often say the very instant that it's too late, they regret it. And I, I, I can't echo that enough. Please, if you're having any of them thoughts, get help, talk, talk about it. Talk to me, me link to my socials in the be description below. Talk, talk to someone. Um, It's not the answer. So, we now, this was, was in the September, in December of 2018, I went to Gamblers Anonymous. I had been many times before, I had said I'm going to stop gambling many times before, but this time something felt different, something that felt, I was ready, this was it, I'm going to stop gambling, and I knew that I had to prove it rather than just say it. And I'm pleased to say I haven't had a bet since. It was two years yesterday and I just cannot thank the people who have supported me along the way. Um, people turned the back on me, family members, friends. Rightly so, I caused so much destruction. But like I said, you know, the people who did stand by me, I cannot thank enough. And the people who can't find it within them to maybe accept my apologies and see that I've changed. Well, I can't do anything about that, but I am deeply, deeply, deeply sorry for everything that I did. So I am now two years and one day gamble free. I have got barriers in place that help me to be gamble free and I would recommend them to anyone. But number one is GamStop. Not to be confused with Gamban. Gamban is a software that stops you getting on betting websites. GamStop is a website where you put your details in, your date of birth, everything, and when you go to go on an online casino or website, sports betting or whatever, if you go to create an account or even have an existing account, it won't let you access it. It won't let you on, it won't let you open a new account. That is a great tool. It lasts for five years, then then obviously you renew that. I'm uh, self-excluded from bookmakers. I don't carry money. Now, some men find this as a big sort of 
male pride, if you like. I work for my money. I want to carry it. I'm not being treated like a child. The truth is, if you are struggling with gambling addiction in particular, if you've got no money on you, you cannot gamble. And it's as simple as that. I mean, when I say no money, I mean no money in your wallet. If you've got a card, it's got no money on it. What I would recommend is if you insist on having a card, I don't personally, but make it as basic as possible where if you need £4 for a bit of shopping, you know, lunch or whatever, your missus or your partner, family member or your friend, if you can get one of those to look after your money for you, ask them to transfer you the £4 onto it, £5, £20, whatever you need, but not more than you need because really, do you really need £20 for a £5 lunch? £15 sat in the account? It's, it's just tempting. Temptations that you don't need. I would recommend that you don't have money on you for the first for the first part especially. Um, I would also recommend Gamblers Anonymous. Um, it's not for everyone. Some people don't like the idea of a group setting. Some people prefer counselling. That's up to them. All I would say is if you do find it something you want to try, by all means get in touch with me. I would invite you into my local one online. Um, or look up your local Gamblers Anonymous, both in person and online meetings. Um, and it's just give it give it ninety days, give it three months. Um, see what you think. Give it one session though, at least, and just see what you think. It's really beneficial. Some of the advice that you receive in there is second to none, and they've been through it, so there's no judging. There's people who have done worse than me in there. People who haven't done as much as me in there. But it's all a fellowship. We all really, really support each other. Men, women, families, whatever. There's a room for families. And, it, you know, it's it's great. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to draw this video to a close now. Um, but just to finish on a higher note, um, I know it's been quite a depressing story or whatever, but... Um, my wife and I had given up hope on having a child. There'd been nothing stopping it for 13 years. Perhaps fate said, while he's gambling his head off, no way are you going to have a child. I don't know. But uh, she lost 12 and a half stone last year and we conceived. And now a month ago, uh, sorry, six weeks ago, she'll kill me. We brought into the world an amazing little girl, Amelia. And I just, I'm so thrilled with that. And so is my wife after everything that I've put her through, not just gambling, a lot of other things. Um, it's just a delight to see her so happy. And that child doesn't have to put up with the gambling, the, the moods, the, the self-harming cuts, things like that. I'm just in a much better place now. Things are not rosy and tinty and brilliant completely, but I'm in a much better place and you can be too. Like I said, if you're struggling, if you find any uh, questions you want to ask, please ask away in the comments or get in touch on the social media links below. Um, if you could do me a massive favour, this channel is to help others out there by telling my story and that of others having them on to give them chance um i will release videos once or twice a week if you can like this video that will help the youtube algorithms as will making a comment and if you could find it within you to share the video um i know some people won't you know who wants really to fill the socials with gambling addiction but if you can, that would be much, much appreciated. I'm just trying to help their algorithms. The more people that see this, the more chance it's got of reaching someone who really, really needs it. I just want to give back on the help that I've had over the years. So if you can, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you can, share.
Okay, so lastly, I am not an expert. I don't claim to be. This is just my story. I've been Kieran Smith. It's been a pleasure telling it as well as heartache, remembering it. But ultimately, again, it's 12 others. Thank you for listening and I will see you on the next one.